Hey everybody, Icy Cat here. We have the newest information regarding the balancing changes coming for the newest season. From weapon balancing to operator balancing, game mechanics, and more, stick around as I go over all the information next. The dev team released the newest designer notes for the preseason today, and here's the information that they made available for us. First up is weapon balancing for Kivera's M12 SMG. They are taking the damage from 36 and increasing it by 4 points to 40 damage. They say the M12 is currently one of the lowest damages and slowest firing SMGs in the game. With most players favoring her sidearm, there's currently very little reason to select the M12, and they're looking to balance it by having a more viable choice for this increase in damage on the SMG. However, I do think that most people are still going to side with that shotgun for it because honestly, most people know that Cav's pistol is pretty much treated as her primary and the shotgun allows her to go ahead and pop hatches for rotations as she moves around the map more fluidly. So I don't know if the extra four points of damage is going to be enough to draw more people to the SMG or not, but having some improvement on that is always a good thing to see. Next up are balancing changes for Ella's F012 shotgun. They are now decreasing the damage dealt beyond 10 meters. They are also increasing the spread and reducing the accuracy. They say Ella's F012 is very strong and frustrating, mostly for console players, but on PC as well. She is targeted by operator bans by console players, and when she isn't, her pick rate is still very high. They say that these changes will now bring the weapon more in line with other semi-auto shotguns. They hope that this will reduce her ban rate and make her a little less frustrating to play against. Now, I do know that this particular change was received on the test server as something that the player base wanted accompanied with a minor buff to Ella's recoil, specifically the horizontal recoil control. No word on if Ubisoft will take a look at doing that, but it does make sense that if they're going to nerf one weapon, they may be able to buff the other one to sort of compensate and even things out. And Ella's recoil does tend to be a little bit all over the place at longer ranges. Another gun that is very similar to the FO-12 is the SAS-G12, which will get a spread increase and accuracy reduction similarly. They say the SAS-G12 shares many similarities with the FO-12, and a spread increase when shooting rapidly as well as an increased recoil will make it a bit less easy to control. The next weapon balancing change comes to the Boss G12.2, and they say simply Boss G ACOG is here. Adding the ACOG to this shotgun was mostly motivated by the low performance of the weapon. Even if part of the community was also looking forward to the addition of the ACOG, it remained a pure balancing decision. The new sight should not affect the overall performance of this weapon. Now let's take a look at operator balancing. So first up is glass. And we've got a graphic here that shows the comparison between Year 4 Season 3 and Season 4. You can see the target is barely illuminated because he has to stand still to get the full effect, and until he does, there's almost no illumination there. By contrast, the Year 4 Season 4 image shows that there is a much more intense highlight on the target. And they said that they really wanted to give him a little bit more love to help him spot enemies even when the scope is not charged. The next operator getting a change is Kaid, and this is a significant one. They are increasing his electric claw radius from 0.75 meters to 1.3 meters. And you can see here in the image below how that pans out. So we have a significantly increased radius on that, and this will actually allow him to affect multiple objects a lot more easily. In fact, when you're on some maps that actually have those wall panels that take up smaller reinforcement segments, you'll actually have a three panels. So I'm thinking of maybe the garage door on house that takes three panels to go across. If you place this in the middle now, you may be able to cover all three of those if you get the placement correct with just one charge. Similarly, this also allows it to spread out a little bit more to affecting other gadgets in the nearby area. Now, this is important because his gadget will actually complement that barbed wire, making it a much more useful interaction. And previously, after that change that they made when they took the barbed wire away, he lost the ability to make his own customized setups using the barbed wire with the Electro Claw. You were having to depend on other players to choose to take the barbed wire and then to depend on them to also put it where you want them to put it. And if you were solo queuing, good luck with that. Now, Kaid returns back to the ability to make his own setups using the electric claw and barbed wire. Warden sees a minor change in that his barbed wire is being replaced with C4. They say they want to increase his potential as a denial defender for diffuser plays. The C4 should give him more opportunity to defend a bomb site without exposing himself. They say that additionally they are still considering other options to make sure Warden is relevant, and they'll tell you more when they're ready. So we can definitely look forward to some more changes coming for Warden, we just don't know exactly what they'll be yet. Jackal's rework is also being included, and this is one we've known about for a while. Basically the way this is working is the number of pings you get on scanning the footprints will be dependent on the age of the footprint. The older it is, the less 
less pings you'll get. And also, once you scan it, those footprints will disappear completely. If you don't want to lose those footprints, then you have to choose not to scan. They say that this change is really being made as Jackal is the most banned attacker and a high source of frustration, so they want to make his balancing a top priority. Finally, we are getting a new limb penetration system. The new bullet penetration system will impact every bullet you shoot. The dev team is aiming at reducing confusion. A side effect of this change should increase the lethality of various classes of weapons in certain situations. And you can see here by the diagram how that breaks down. So there's no penetration on shotguns and machine pistols as shown here, with the exception of the Boss G or the TSG-12 shotguns. As those are slug-based shotguns, so they have different rule sets applied to them. Then you have simple penetration. This is going to fall under the category of most of the guns in the game, the assault rifles, submachine guns, LMGs, pistols, revolvers. This means that if a limb is up in front of a head, for instance, if a flashbang goes off and they put their arm in front of their face, the penetration will now actually punch through that hand or the arm that's up on that animation and no longer block that headshot. Because it is penetration, there will be a little bit of reduced damage on that headshot, but it will still be a headshot. And then there's the category of full penetration. This is for designated marksman rifles and sniper rifles. This will give you the ability to punch through an operator's entire body and still damage materials or other operators on the other side of them. The Boss G and TCS G12 will also fall into this category of penetration due to their slug rounds. All of these balancing changes for operators and weapons will be coming to the launch of Operation Shifting Tides. Now that is still currently in the test server but will be going live very soon. Of course, we will get the new operators at that time, and we'll be going over all the new information for the reworked theme park map, as well as the operators for Wamai and Kali, as well as any other new information that comes out. So if you haven't already, please do like and subscribe. Make sure you click that notification icon so you're alerted as soon as new information becomes available. You can also follow me over at IcyCat25 on either Facebook or Twitter. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time.